Seches Bava Kama Dafkaf Aleph briefly concludes the Gemara's discussion of a worker who did something wrong, who didn't complete the job correctly. And the Gemara will get into a related topic, which centers around the idea of when something looks a certain way, it's look, does that count as an object? Does that count as a thing? And that'll get us into whether if you colored something, do you own the coloration or does the coloring have a value to it? So let's begin. The Gemara quotes a Brisa. That has two cases, Machlokes in between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda. So the first case is where somebody is hired to make a chair, and instead he makes a bench, or he's hired to make a bench, and instead he makes a chair. So he did the job wrong. So here you have Machlokes in between Meir and Rabbi Huda. What does he need to pay the owner? According to Rabbi Meir, he was cleaning the wood when he did the wrong thing with it. He did a shinoi. He, it's as if he took the wood and then he did a shinoi with it. And he changed it for something he was not asked to. So therefore, he's cleaning the wood. He just has to pay for the wood. Rabbi Yehuda says this is like the situations we had before. We were at the other and he returns whatever he made to the owner, and the owner only needs to pay him the lesser of the two, either the expenses that he spent on it or the improvement that he made it to it, the lesser of the two. But he has to give it up, and that's what he has to do. Now, the Gemara says that Rabbi Meir agrees to Rabbi Yehuda if instead of making the wrong object, instead of being assigned to make a chair and he made a bench, he was assigned to make a nice chair and he made an ugly chair. So that's not really a shinu. So he wasn't clean it. He just did the job wrong, but he wasn't clean it. So there, it's yada uh, it's yada a uh, just like Rabbi Huda had said before. Now we get to the next sugya where the Gemara introduces a shaila, but has a hard time nailing down what is the case exactly, and then we'll get into the lambda's mind. So the question that's asked is: Is there a value? To the coloration that's applied to wool. So let's say the wool, when it's plain wool, and then you dye it red. So that red color, is that considered to be an object of value? It's just a look. It's the same wool, just now looks red. Is that considered to be a thing, that look, that color? Or is it not considered to be a thing? So the Gemara wants to know, what's the case and what exactly is your Shiloh? The first case the Gemara wants to suggest is where someone stole some of them. That is, he stole the plants that are used to make the dye, and he pressed them, he crushed them, he soaked them in the water, he made he made them into the paint, and then he used them to dye wool. So the Gemara's question is then, okay, so your question is, all right, does he have to return that color? Which would mean he would have to turn the wool, because the color is in the wool. But the Gemara says, it shouldn't be relevant, this question, because since he made a shinoi in what he stole, he stole the plants, and then he turned it into the dyed wool, he made a shinoi, so he shouldn't have to return it anyway, he just needs to pay the value of what he stole. So it's not a gay, the question. So the Gemara says, okay, so we'll change the case. He stole the samanim when it was already made into the dye, so he really stole the paint, and he dyed wool with it. So the question is, is it considered to be an object? And the owner of the wool can say, give me back my samanim that you stole, in which case he has to give him the wool. Or do we say it's not? it has no value? And there's nothing for him to return. It's not there anymore. So the Gemara says, one second. Even if there's nothing there for him to return, what that means is that he took his plants and he destroyed them. So now you're saying it's not a thing anymore. So he still has to pay for it. So what's the difference? So the Gemara, the difference is, does he have to give him the cash? Or can he say, take your color back? So he says, take your color back. How is he supposed to take the color back? It's soaked into the wool. So the says, wash it out with soap. So when it says, washing that with the soap will get it off the wool. It won't get the color back. So the Gemara, therefore, changes the whole story a bit. The Gemara says he stole wool, and he stole the paint. Both of them belong to the same person. And then he took that paint, and he dyed that wool. And now he wants to return it and say, I'm giving you back your wool and your paint. And all he then returns is the colored wool. So if he... <coughs> so if we say that the color has a value to it, has a chashivas, which is what the Gemara calls yesh shevach simanam al tzemer. So then he's returning the simanam. He's returning the plants to him as well as returning the wool. They're now joined together as one. If ever it has no value, so he's only returning the wool. Separately, he has to return the plants, which he destroyed and now he needs to pay for. So the Gemara, why should you have to pay extra? Either way, it comes out to the same amount because the value of the wool went up now that he colored it. So by returning it to him, he's returning something more valuable. So therefore, he's getting back the paint anyway. So either way, you shouldn't need to pay extra. So he says, no, in a situation where the value of the dyed wool went down, and it's actually now 
worth less than the wool and the dye separately. So had it belonged to the owner, had he still had it, he could say, I would have chosen whether I want to take a loss and use the paint to dye my wool, or I would have, or I could have decided I don't want to because it's worth more if I leave it undyed. But now you took the choice away from me, so you need to pay for it to give the choice back to me. Another way to get out of that would be to say that he used the paint to dye something which doesn't improve by dyeing. The Gemara says he dyed a kupa. Now Rashi has two translations of that. Either it's a monkey or a box. Something which you certainly you don't improve by dyeing it. <clears throat> now, the Gemara has another answer to the original question, and that's Ravina. Ravina says no. Actually, we're referring to where the wool belonged to one person and the color, the dye, belonged to someone else. What happened was is that he didn't actually steal it, and nothing happened. There was no theft. But a monkey came and used one person's... Uh, ink to dye someone else's wool. So if there's a value, so there's no theft. So you're not mechaev him for the theft. But if the dye on it has a value, he could say, give me back my dye. My dye exists by you. If it has no value, it's not considered to be a thing in and of itself, then he can't say, give me back my thing, because it's not a thing. Okay, so we've figured out the question. The question is, if something looks different, if it has a coloration, is that considered to be a thing or not? Is that considered to be an object with a value? So now let's get into the rise. So tomorrow's first proof is a Mishnah that says if somebody colored a article of clothing with peels, with fruit peels that are Arla, so they have an Isser Arla on them, so the Mishnah says it has to be destroyed, you have to light it on fire, just like you have to destroy Arla that's used by Isser. So you see that it is a thing, the coloring is a thing, that's why you have to destroy it. So it says it's not a riot, it's a special halacha by Arla, that any hana, any pleasure which is visible, is part of what the Torah answered. And Rabbi that says, when the Torah says, Arelim lo yoichal, so I would only know that you're not allowed to eat Arla. How do you know that you're not allowed to have hana from it? You're not allowed to color clothing with it. You're not allowed to light a fire with it. You're not allowed to light a candle with it. Therefore it says, Va'araltem or loso is piriyoy. Arelim lo yoichal. That's an extra repeated phrase to teach any type of things which you can see, any type of visible hana, it, it counts as another you're not allowed to have, and therefore you have to burn it. So therefore, as a special halacha by Arli, you can't learn from this in general that look counts as a thing. So the Marbuk's another raya. We have a, an article of clothing, the Mishnah says, that was colored with peels of Shemitah. So that's also an issue, you're not allowed to use Shemitah peels for that. And it says you need to burn that as well. So the Gemara says, again, raya that, <clears throat> the way something looks is considered to be a thing. Where it says no raya, also special halacha by Shemitah, because it says tihiye, and if you have a drasha on that, where it says kiddish tihiyelochem, that it's bahavasoi tihiy, in any way in which it still is, it's considered to be an iser, and you're not allowed to use it any further. Now, the Gemara says Rava asked a contradiction. We have a mission that says that if you have an article of clothing that was colored with peels of Arla, it has to be burned. This one we just brought. So you see that Chazus and Milsa, you see that the look cancels as something. Contradicting that, we have a mission that discusses a revius of blood. And it says that blood, we know, is Matame Bayo, blood from a human that died, is Matame Bayo. We have a drasha for that. Now, if that blood got soaked into an article of clothing in a house, is that Matami Bayal or not? So we have a brazer that indicates that sometimes it isn't and sometimes it isn't. The Gemara explains it's not a machoikis. It depends if the blood was in the house and then soaked into the clothing or it was soaked into the clothing first and then brought into the house. If it was in the house first, it's Matami the house right then because it's uh, not soaked yet. But if it's already soaked by the time it comes in, so in the soaked in state, it cannot be Matami the house. Unless there's enough that if you would wash it out, you would still get a revius of blood that washes out. Now, from the fact that when there, there is not enough for a revius of blood to wash out, however, there is a revius soaked in there. It's not Matami the house because it's in the clothing, shows that it doesn't count as a thing. While it's soaked in, it's not considered to be something. It's a lava mill song, which contradicts the price we brought before that said that the coloration of Arla on the clothing is a problem. So it's a contradiction. How do you answer that? So the answer is a special kula. Rav Kahana says it's a special leniency in the halachos of blood. We're talking specifically about blood, there are banan, where somebody was killed and is a mixture of lifeblood and not lifeblood. And therefore, we don't know how much of the actual blood of his neshama is there, of the nefesh is there. And therefore, it's only nishas or banan. And therefore, we are makel in a case of being with time in the house, that the blood which is soaked into it won't be considered to be something unless it could really wash out and still be revised on. 
The Gemara now continues on the topic of Shemitah. The Gemara says, Rav asks a contradiction between two Mishnayis. Are branches Kedushas Shaviyas or not? A branch, it has a function that, because there's a function in it too. Does that make it have Kedushas Shemitah or not? So the one Mishnah says, branches that are used to make colors, like a wild growing Sitim in Kutza. Sitim is Karkum, is a yellow color. Kutza makes a blue color. So this mission says they do have a Kedusha Shvius and their value has a Kedusha Shvius. And it even has the lachas of beer that once it's not available to animals in the field, you have to take it out of your house as well. And their value also has to be taken out of the house. So there is beer there. Now, that Bryce approves that wood has Kedusha Shvius. We have a different Bryce that says reeds and grape branches that are collected to uh, make a little the storehouse to be woven t- together. Um, so if you had in mind to eat them, there is Kedushas Shvius, but if you had in mind just as wood, then there is not Kedushas Shvius. So why not? You, we just said before that there is Kedushas Shvius if you're using it to make the paint. So the Gemara says the answer is that when the Torah says Achiwa has to be something which you're going to eat, it refers to any Hana in which the hana, the pleasure, the use you get out of it, and the destruction of the wood happens at the same time. Wood which is going to burn, you get the destruction, You the it's destroyed first, then it turns into coals, and then you get the light and the heat from the coals after. So it's hana is after it's burned, after it's already destroyed. By that time, it's not Kedusha Shvius anymore, and therefore that hana doesn't count. It only counts if you get hana while you're destroying it. So Yubara says... But there are a situation in which branches are burned that they are used, and that's if they give off light. And you can carry the, the torch in your hand. That's at the time of the burning. So it says, Rava, most branches aren't used for light. They're used for firewood to make a fire to heat. And that's the embers that are after the burning. And therefore, um, you cannot count them as the hana and the destruction at the same time. And therefore, it's not included.